Okay, I think everybody knows my first guest. She's the representative from San Francisco and the 52nd Speaker of the House for the United States of America, Nancy Pelosi. Thank you very much for doing this. Welcome to my game room. And I have many questions for you in these difficult times. The first one being, everyone seems to agree testing is the way to get back to norm normality in America. <clears throat> and uh, it's the most frustrating thing is it seems like it would even help Trump. Uh, but he seems to be dragging his feet on this most important issue. Is there any way Congress can pass their own plan? Well, what we passed today, which we just uh, finished passing, is the uh, testing. We have $25 billion in there for testing, but we require that there be a national strategic plan for testing and that we have reporting back as to how it is impacting all communities, communities of color and uh, diversity in our country. Uh, so it insists on that. Uh, but it, 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 we, we passed our first bill. This is our fourth bill, all bipartisan. First bill was March 4th, it was called testing, testing, testing. Here we are more than a month and a half later and we still have to pass another bill. It's very hard to understand why they are dragging their feet or whatever, or their brains or whatever, uh, not to realize that if we want to open up the economy, test, 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 contact trace, incubate, um, isolate that. You know, it's, it's, it's so simple. You, you have to uh, not only test, but trace and shelter in place until it's, the coast is clear. Okay, you mentioned that this is the fourth bill you've passed. Um, I think the total now is coming up on $2.7 trillion. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot of you know, money in a very short period of time. Uh, I know Congress controls the purse strings. I can't imagine there's much left in the purse. I, I just don't get it. I don't understand how, I know we can bail out certain sectors as we have done in the past. I don't know how you can just keep indefinitely writing checks uh, we were 20 trillion in the hole to begin with, uh, and and all world governments who are you know already in debt are doing this. How can the whole world be writing this funny money? Well, because it's a matter of life and death. Uh, nobody made as big a fuss as we did uh, when they passed a nearly two trillion dollar tax break for the wealthiest people in our country. 83 percent of the benefits going to the top one percent, and the debt that that laid on our kids. Uh, to pay for in the future. Uh, so, but this is more of an investment in the, li the lives and the livelihood of the American people. And we have to think big about that. Uh, the more we invest in science and health, the quicker our economy will recover from the pandemic. Well, it will recover un unless people get wise to the fact that we're just writing checks for money that doesn't exist. I mean, what is what is the point of bailing out banks who are then just going to loan back the money that doesn't exist to, to us again? I, I, it seems like it's a house of cards that, that could, in the end, wind up hurting more people than, than the disease. Well, the point is to keep people working. It's paycheck retention. And so the point of these the, the, this legislation for uh, the uh, they call paycheck protection uh, program is that the small businesses would be able to have uh, some relief and if they kept their workers on then they would have debt forgiveness and that is uh, a very important part of it uh, we were concerned when they asked for more money right away we said well, wait a minute we want to make sure we want to see the data and the data that we have seen anecdotally not scientifically yet is telling us that many low, so we say, underbanked communities were not getting any of this money, whether it was women, minority-owned businesses, Native American veterans, rural communities, et cetera, uh, uh, were not getting these loans because they, they just didn't have banking relationships that were uh, putting them higher up in the line, further up in the line. Uh, so it is uh, probably, uh, while it is an investment, and it is stimulant to the economy when that, hopefully when that comes, it is uh, not anything in comparison to the irresponsibility of a tax cut of almost $2 trillion when you count the interest on the debt that all of these de deficit hawks, these fiscal conservatives didn't even give one uh, ounce of thought to. The fact is we expect a return on this money. When we invest in food stamps, 
that's stimulus. When we invest in unemployment insurance, that's stimulus. When we give a direct payment, that's stimulus. And hopefully when we keep these people in their jobs, and that was the point of the small business, but also uh, the uh, assistance to the aerospace industry, the airline industry, like that, the point is they keep the people in their jobs and therefore they have paychecks and therefore uh, they can people can survive. It's a tough time because the lives are th their lives are threatened as well as their livelihood, as well as our democracy, I might add that. We're going to have money in there uh, for elections for direct for Well, the, the uh, CDC this week said it might come around again in, in the fall. Um, can we afford to do the whole thing again? Can we afford to spend this kind of money a second time in one year? I think that uh, it should be clear that this is not doing the job that it is set out to do completely, that we may have to consider some other options. Others have proposed a sovereign fund, uh, profits for which go to the these unemployed people or guaranteed income, other things that may not even be as costly as continuing down this path. Uh, but there is a reverence for small business in our country as the entrepreneurial spirit, the optimism of job creation, wealth creation, and the rest. And it's a good place uh, to uh, help people stay in business. But even if they stay in business, because we're giving this loan, which if they keep people employed, they get they don't have to pay back. They, the, their rent is paid, their utilities are paid, their employees are there. At the end of the time, they still have to have customers. And that's really why we need everybody to participate. That's why we need another bill. That will be costly. And we call it our heroes bill. And that's for state and local, but that's not what it's not state and local bureaucrats, bureaucracy. It's healthcare workers, police and fire, emergency services, people, our teachers, our transit workers, all of the people that are paid for by the local and state and local public sector. They need jobs too. And they right now are the ones on the front line risking their lives to save other people's lives. And, and, and on top of that, they may lose their jobs because of the, uh, uh, the loss of revenue to the state. So that will be our next bill. And it will be hundreds of billions of dollars as well to states and localities, counties, municipalities, cities, some bigger than uh, small towns, but nonetheless, all having the responsibility of meeting the needs of healthcare needs of coronavirus, but also recognize the revenue loss that they have. And that has to be recognized as a cost of the coronavirus. So it, there's more There's more to come, whether it's not necessarily in the same vein of small business, but it's jobs, jobs, jobs. So the way we see it is all about keeping people employed, keeping people employed. But that's why we're having a we passed today, I was very pleased, a, a select committee on coronavirus to make sure that the money spent is money that is spent for helping people keep their jobs, not, not enriching shareholders or dividends, bonuses, corporate CEO pay or anything like that. That, that angers the American people and it's not right. Secondly, people want their paychecks, whether it's unemployment insurance, whether it's direct payment, whether it's PPP, the like page, this small business initiative. And the third thing is they, first and foremost, I should have said, they want these first responders to be protected. Uh, the healthcare providers, uh, the first responders to be protected uh, for what they are doing. They're our heroes, but uh, we, uh, I think, are unworthy to praise them and thank them unless we're going to support them. Okay. Well, I thank you for doing this. I hope Trump doesn't steal all that money. I do worry about that. Uh, he's yeah, done it sorry. before. That's why we have this committee to make sure that the money is spent to the best. And and by the way, the good news is the American people are paying attention. They are watching. And we want in what we are doing uh, to change, make change. That's so not all this hundreds of billions of dollars is not, is not a way to harden the disparity in access to credit that is there but to melt that down. And that's what the bill that we're passing today uh, strives to do. Thank okay. you for your that, interest. That, in I appreciate it, everything you do, Madam Speaker. And uh, I hope I see you in person very soon. Right. Thanks and so I much. share your concern about the national debt. It's a 
a bill that we don't want our children to pay. So we have to grow the economy uh, to make up. Well, I, I, national debt is one thing. I'm I'm worried about you know the whole thing collapsing and we going into a depression. But let's end on a happy note and hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> okay. no, we have to Thank you so much. <laughs> make sure it doesn't, and that why that's why we have to win the election in November. Okay. Yes, I agree with that. All right. Thank you. Take care of yourself. You too. Stay, stay okay. safe, please. Thank you. All right.